Well, hello and welcome to day 264 of our daily Bible reading. Let's begin with prayer. God of all creation, thank you for your word that lives in us and through us. Amen. Today we begin in the book of Isaiah, reading chapters 37 and 38. Hezekiah consults Isaiah. When Hezekiah heard it, he tore his clothes, covered himself with sackcloth, and went into the house of the Lord. And he sent Eliakim, who was in charge of the palace, and Shebna the secretary, and the senior priests, covered with sackcloth, to the prophet Isaiah, son of Amoz. They said to him, Thus says Hezekiah, This day is a day of distress, of rebuke, and of disgrace. Children have come to the birth, and there is no strength to bring them forth. It may be that the Lord your God heard the words of Rab Rabshakeh, whom his master, the king of Assyria, has sent to mock the living God, and will rebuke the words that the Lord your God has heard. Therefore, lift up your prayer for the remnant that is left. When the servants of King Hezekiah came to Isaiah, Isaiah said to them, Say to your master, Thus says the Lord, Do not be afraid because of the words that you have heard, with which the servants of the king of Assyria have reviled me. I myself will put a spirit in him, so that he shall hear a rumor and return to his own land. I will cause him to fall by the sword in his own land. Then Rabshakeh returned and found the king of Assyria fighting against Libna, for he had heard that the king had left Lashish. Now the king heard concerning King Terheka of Cush, he has set out to fight against you. When he heard it, he sent messengers to Hezekiah, saying, Thus shall you speak to King Hezekiah of Judah. Do not let your God, on whom you rely, deceive you by promising that Jerusalem will not be given into the hand of the king of Assyria. See, you have heard what the kings of Assyria have done to all lands, destroying them utterly. Shall you be delivered? Have the gods of the nations delivered them, the nations that my predecessors destroyed, Gozan, Haran, Rezeph, and the people of Eden, who were in Telassar? Where is the king of Hamath, the king of Arpad, the king of Lear, Sepharvaim, Hena, or Iva? Hezekiah's Prayer Hezekiah received the letter from the hand of the messengers and read it. Then Hezekiah went up to the house of the Lord and spread it before the Lord. And Hezekiah prayed to the Lord, saying, O Lord of hosts, God of Israel, who are enthroned above the cherubim, you are God, you alone, of all the kingdoms of the earth. You have made heaven and earth. Incline your ear, O Lord, and hear. Open your eyes, O Lord, and see. Hear all the words of Sennacherib, which he has sent to mock the living God. Truly, O Lord, the kings of Assyria have laid waste all the nations and their lands, and have hurled their gods into the fire, though they were no gods but the work of human hands, wood and stone, and so they were destroyed. So now, O Lord our God, save us from his hand, so that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that you alone are the Lord. Then Isaiah, son of Amoz, sent to Hezekiah, saying, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Because you have prayed to me concerning King Sennacherib of Assyria, this is the word that the Lord has spoken concerning him. She despises you, she scorns you, virgin daughter Zion. She tosses her head behind your back, daughter Jerusalem. Whom have you mocked and reviled? Against whom have you raised your voice and haughtily lifted your eyes? Against the Holy One of Israel. By your servants you have mocked the Lord, and you have said, With my many chariots I have gone up the heights of the mountains to the far recesses of Lebanon. I felled its tallest cedars, its choicest cypresses. I came to its remotest height, its densest forest, 
I dug wells and drank waters. I dr dried up with the sole of my foot all the streams of Egypt. Have you not heard that I determined it long ago? I planned from days of old what now I bring to pass, that you should make fortified cities crash into heaps of ruins, while their inhabitants, shorn of strength, are dismayed and confounded. They have become like plants of the field, and like tender grass, like grass on the housetops that is scorched before the east wind. I know you're rising up and you're sitting down, you're going out and coming in, and you're raging against me, because you have raged against me, and your arrogance has come to my ears. I will put my hook in your nose and my bit in your mouth. I will turn you back on the way by which you came. And this shall be the sign for you. This year, eat what grows of itself, and in the second year, what springs from that. Then in the third year, sow, reap, plant, vineyards, and eat their fruit. The surviving remnant of the house of Judah shall again take root downward and bear fruit upward. For from D Jerusalem a remnant shall go out, and from Mount Zion a band of survivors. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Therefore thus says the Lord concerning the king of Assyria, He shall not come into this city. Shoot an arrow there, come before it with a shield, or cast up a siege ramp against it. By the way that he came, by the same he shall return. He shall not come into this city, says the Lord. For I will defend this city to save it, for my own sake and for the sake of my servant David. Sennacherib's Defeat and Death Then the angel of the Lord set out and struck down 185,000 in the camp of the Assyrians. When morning dawned, they were all dead bodies. Then King Sennacherib of Assyria left, went home, and lived at Nineveh. As he was worshipping in the house of his god Nisroch, his sons Adramelech and Sherezer killed him with the sword, and they escaped into the land of Ararat. His son Esar Haddon succeeded him. Chapter 38 Hezekiah's Illness In those days Hezekiah became sick and was at the point of death. The prophet Isaiah, son of Amoz, came to him and said to him, Thus says the Lord, Set your house in order, for you shall die, you shall not recover. Then Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord, Remember now, O Lord, I implore you, how I have walked before you in faithfulness, with a whole heart, and have done what is good in your sight. And Hezekiah wept bitterly. Then the word of the Lord came to Isaiah, Go and say to Hezekiah, Thus says the Lord, the God of your ancestor David, I have heard your prayer. I have seen your tears. I will add fifteen years to your life. I will deliver you and this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria, and defend this city. This is the sign to you from the Lord, that the Lord will do this thing that he has promised. See, I will make the shadow cast by the declining sun on the dial of Ahaz turn back ten steps. So the sun turned back on the dial the ten steps by which it had declined. A writing of King Hezekiah of Judah after he had been sick and had recovered from his sickness. I said, In the noon noontide of my days I must depart. I am consigned to the gates of Sheol for the rest of my years. I said, I shall not see the Lord in the land of the living. I shall look upon mortals no more, among the inhabitants of the world. My dwelling is plucked up and removed from me like a shepherd's tent, like a weaver, I have rolled up my life. He cuts me off from the loom. From day to night you bring me to an end. I cry for help until morning. Like a lion he breaks all my bones. From day to night you bring me to an end. Like a swallow or a crane I clamor. I moan like a dove. My eyes are weary with looking upward. 
O Lord, I am oppressed. Be my security. But what can I say? For he has spoken to me, and he himself has done it. All my sleep has fled because of the bitterness of my soul. O Lord, by these things people live, and in all these is the life of my spirit. O oh, restore me to health and make me live. Surely it was for my welfare that I had great bitterness, but you have held back my life from the pit of destruction, for you have cast all my sins behind your back. For Sheol cannot thank you, death cannot praise you, those who go down to the pit cannot hope for your faithfulness. The living, the living, they thank you, as I do this day. Fathers, make known to children your faithfulness. The Lord will save me, and we will sing to stringed instruments all the days of our lives at the house of the Lord. Now Isaiah had said, Let them take a lump of figs and apply it to the boil, so that he may recover. Hezekiah also had said, What is the sign that I shall go up to the house of the Lord? Galatians chapter 6 Bear one another's burdens My brothers and sisters, if anyone is detected in a transgression, you who have received the Spirit should restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness. Take care that you yourselves are not tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. For if those who are, are nothing think they are something, they deceive themselves. All must test their own work. Then that work, rather than their neighbor's work, will become a cause for pride. For all must carry their own loads. Those who are taught the word must share in all good things, with their teacher. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked, for you reap whatever you sow. If you sow to your own flesh, you will reap corruption from the flesh. But if you sow to the Spirit, you will reap eternal life from the Spirit. So let us not grow weary in doing what is right, for we will reap at harvest time if we do not give up. So then, whenever we have an opportunity, let us work for the good of all, and especially for those of the family of faith. Final Admonitions and Benediction See what large letters I make when I am writing in my own hand. It is those who want to make a good showing in the flesh who try to compel you to be circumcised, only that they may not be persecuted for the cross of Christ. Even the circumcised do not themselves obey the law, but they want you to be circumcised so that they may boast about your flesh. May I never boast of anything except the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. For neither circumcision nor uncircumcision is anything but a new creation is everything. As for those who will follow this rule, peace be upon them, and mercy, and upon the Israel of God. From now on, let no one make trouble for me, for I carry the marks of Jesus branded on my body. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, brothers and sisters. Amen. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 24. The father of the righteous will greatly rejoice. He who fathers a wise son will be glad in him. Well, this has been the word of God and the word of life. Thanks be to God, and we'll see you tomorrow.